The people that have left footprints on the sand of time have been artists and musicians, astronomers, scientists, dictators, warriors, but very few businessmen. I ended up doing what I said I wanted to do as a child. I didn't build bridges, but I was a builder. And I, I built a company and I built a city. I learned most about running a business or managing a business in the Marine Corps. That was really my graduate school. Learning to take care of other men, be responsible for other men, and to see that they are fed before you eat and taken care of before you take care of yourself. And that was an important uh, thing I learned that I took with me the rest of my life. Of course, Charlotte was big compared to where I had lived, but not big as to, compared to sort of what I'd seen in the Marine Corps. Every city I'd been to in the world, the richest people lived in the center of the town and, and you know, with access to, access to the opera and access to, you know, to all the cultural activities. And in 1974-75, I became president of the company. If you wanted to attract top flight people and top flight companies to the city, you had to have cultural resources because the chief executive officers of those companies were interested in whether or not you had the symphony and whether or not you had the dance, whether or not you had various and sundry artistic endeavors, particularly the performing arts. And I had a series of luncheons which I'd invite two or three people and I would just tell them, you know, I'm giving a million dollars this and I'm not having, I'm not asking anybody but the big hitters and you're one of them. And, and I, I had a 100% kill ratio. I raised $16 million from 16 people. A guy that might have a record of giving away money to his school or something had never given the arts a dime, would end up giving us a million dollars because he wanted to be a player. So if you get in the position where you decide who the players are, then you can make a lot of things happen. When we built housing in the center city, first, fourth, and third ward, the housing was open to everyone so that you have millionaires living next door to people that are making $50,000 a year. And we like that about our city, so we've created fabric in the city. One of the great things that we've done to go with the arts and, and cultural aspects is we brought the professional football team into the center city, brought the professional basketball team into the center city. It pulls us together. It's cement, a glue that helps make this a better community. We have so many newcomers, maybe a half a million people have moved here in the last 10 years. They can't imagine the village it was when I came here in 1959. It was, I remember one of the big entertainments was I took my two boys, they were little boys, and we went up and sat on the curb at the square where Tryon and Trade cross and watched them knock down the Crest Five and Dime store there with a, you know, with a big wrecking ball. And there were no, we, I wasn't worried about my children getting run over. There were no cars that came down Tryon Street. I mean, at, at night, it's just like dead. Now you go down Tryon Street on any night and it's big time activity going on. People of all ages. I guess one of the things I'd like to see us do is to lift more people uh, from the poverty cycle through education and at the same time, attract jobs to the state, the high paying jobs that will allow us to lift ourselves economically. Now I believe there's a straight connection between that. That is, if you have a talented workforce, good jobs will come to your state. I would like to be remembered as somebody who actually cared about his people that he worked with for 42 years. Probably a million people. Hard to believe that, but when I went to work, there were 230 of us at the company, and when I retired, there were over 200,000. I like to think that I made a difference to a lot of people, and that's really what I want to be remembered as somebody that really made a difference.